For the weekend, Bloomberg reported that the Biden camp has raised concern over the lack of black and Latino voters turning out in key battleground states such as Florida and Pennsylvania. Joining us now, president and CEO of Unidos U.S., the largest national Latino civil rights and advocacy organization in the country, Janet Murguia. Also with us, CEO of the National Association of Latino and uh, elected and appointed officials, Arturo Vargas. Good to have you both with us. And Janet, I'll start with you. Um, how, how does the turnout look like from your perspective? What can be done to, uh, to get Latino voters to actually get to the polls? Well, actually, I think we're going to see that Latino voters are going to be making historical uh, inroads as it relates to their turnout. We're already seeing this year that we've more than quadrupled our participation in early and absentee balloting, balloting compared to 2016. And... Um, you know, that's a 224% increase, and this compares to about 165% increase in early and absentee ballots uh, for voters overall. Now, I do know that uh, we have always seen South Florida, and in particular, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the breakout of the Latino voters in that area, always be very competitive in terms of no one party uh, being fully uh owning the, the, uh, the Latino community's vote. And that's uh, been historically true. But overall, we're, I'm here in Arizona. I was in Tucson on Saturday here in Phoenix these next few days. I'm seeing overwhelming enthusiasm for the turnout by Latino voters. And I think that's going to be consistent in all the key states like Texas, Florida, uh, Arizona, Nevada. I think we're seeing a real uptick that will be historical. Arturo, are you seeing the same thing? Absolutely. Uh, good morning. It's good to see my good friend, Janet Murguia, this today. Uh, <laughs> we've been doing a tracking poll uh, for the nine weeks leading up to this election. And as of today, we have surveyed 3,700 Latino registered voters. Half of them have told us they already have voted as of today. Our projections at the Naleo Educational Fund were that 14.6 Latinos would vote. Now, that's a 15 percent increase over 2016. We think our projections are going to be shattered by tomorrow. Well over 14.6 million Latinos will vote. According to our poll, enthusiasm is extremely high. Up to 75 percent of Latinos are telling us they are certain to vote. And so we're excited about a strong Latino turnout. So, Janet, as you kind of suss out the differences between President Trump and Joe Biden as candidates, where do you see the support for Joe Biden? On what issue exactly? And on the other side, what about for President Trump? Well, I was seeing your segment earlier, and Kurt pointed it out, and I think it's something we're seeing reinforced day in and day out. Uh, COVID-19 is top of mind for all of our Latino voters, and they're looking for someone who will address this. And they've seen so far really uh, a failure in leadership. That's something that we've seen in our polling. It tracks what we're hearing as well. Our, our community has been crushed uh, by the impact of COVID, uh, disproportionately so. We're two to three mm -hmm. times uh, more likely to get the uh, disease. And then we're also uh, more likely at a higher rate to die from it. So for our community, someone being able to get a, a handle on this pandemic and address it and ultimately be able to address uh, health care costs, uh, that is top of mind. And uh, we're seeing that Biden is trending quite favorably among Latino voters in both of those areas. Obviously, the economy top of mind as well, strengthening it and turning it around. But our community wants a leader who will unify us, uh, who will respect our contributions, in particular as essential workers during this time where we've stepped in to keep the country right. going. And uh, those are all issues that are very top of mind for our community. Arturo, um, this election, I, I, I've enjoyed watching this election unfold because I <laughs> It's been very educational for politicians and pundits who, yeah, I've long complained that the Democratic Party looked at Hispanic Latino voters as a monolith. And they would just say behind closed doors, well, you know, the Hispanic population is growing at such a rate. We're going to win this state and that state in four years. 
never thinking that like in a state like Florida, like Cuban American uh, voters are far different than Puerto Rican voters are far different than Dominican voters are far different than a lot of different Hispanic Latino voters. And it's insulting uh, to suggest that you can just look at at Hispanics, uh, Latinos as one overarching group. Um, uh, talk about uh, talk about all the undercurrents that you've seen this year and and just sort of the, this rich uh, the, the, this rich fabric of, of, of Hispanics, of Latinos uh, and and how it's going to impact the election. Well, we've always said that the Latino electorate is not a monolith, that it's diverse. It's diverse not just by national origin. It's also diverse by geography. You know, your Mexican-American voter in Texas, it's not the same as your Mexican-American voter necessarily in California. So the smart campaigns are the one that really find out who the electorate is that is Latino, that they're appealing to, listening to the voters and not assuming uh, what are the issues important to Latinos? Again, according to our tracking poll, as Janet said, COVID-19 is the number one issue Latinos have in mind as they go to the polls followed by access to health care, then wages and the economy, then immigration reform, and then institutional racism. Consistently, those are the five top issues Latinos are caring about. And with more than a third of Latinos saying they know somebody who has died from COVID-19, the campaigns, the candidates who are going to speak to Latinos about how they will address COVID-19 are probably going to have the most success. All right. Okay. Janet Margoya and Arturia Vargas, thank you so much uh, to you both you for being on the show this morning. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.